Yes, yes, team. Welcome to another episode of the Total Mental Performance Podcast. Today, we have a very, very special guest. We have Alice. Actually, I've never actually said your first name aloud. How do I say your second name? Alice. Blackledge. <laughs> it's Blackledge. Alice Blackledge. Alice Blackledge. I've never, never actually... never said my second name? Never aloud, no. Oh. It's Alice. Yeah. Just Alice. Just Alice. <laughs> just Alice. Just Alice. Always uh, just Alice. Alice is the founder uh, and coach of the Empowerment Project. She's been on quite a journey with us. She's worked through our one to one evolution program. And I know that she's got loads of stories to, to share with us mm. on what she's been working on. So, Alice, welcome to the Total Mental Performance Podcast. Thank you so much. Honestly, such a pleasure to be here. Like, I feel so honored. When you messaged me and asked, I was like, well, absolutely, mm. yes. And then the second one was like, Oh, it's a little bit of fear there, but you've taught me to lean into fear, so here we are. <laughs> exactly. Fear fear is always going to be there. It's going to be there on everything. It's going to be there on business, content, going to new levels. So fear isn't going to go away. So it's learning to own that fear, use that fear, mm -hmm. because it's got to become your friend. It's gotta, yeah. it's, you've got to look at fear and what is fear telling me? It's telling me I'm going to a new level. I'm going to push myself. I'm potentially going to be vulnerable. I'm going to share some tough shit. Yeah. Um, but through the other side of fear is always growth. Exactly. And that's what it's coming back to. I think um, I had a little bit of a pinch me moment as well because I did listen to a lot of your podcasts prior to obviously connecting with you, signing up with you. And I was like, wow, I'm going to be on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> it's such a, a rite of passage. Oh. The amount of clients we have that <laughs> listen to all the podcasts and then yeah. they, they, they do the program and then they're like, right, actually, I, I want to I come on and guest this. Uh, yeah. Is amazing. But if you could just explain for all of our listeners, what is it that you actually do and how you set up? So what I do, I have an absolute passion and desire to help impact women, not only through their body and the physical, but more connecting the dots. So body, mind, and for the people that may be a spiritual or not, I do believe we all have a soul. We have a higher self, you know, the future self. So we're connecting the dots between all three. And my passion and desire have has come from that, from my own journey personally. And um, coming from a bodybuilding background, I found a lot through my own journey. And that has always just funneled back into my own coaching on how I coach women. And I think the desire to just help as many women as possible feel amazing in their own skin, but also their mind and how they present themselves, how they show up in certain situations and learn how to just really love themselves now, not just when they've mm. changed or dropped a bit of body fat. So that's essentially what we do. Um, we often build coaching programs for the versions of ourselves that we felt like needed that. So where does that come from for you? When we think about the word empowerment, loving yourself with how you look, where does that all come from? That's come from a place of my own journey, I guess, like feeling, really discovering that inner power. So we actually have our first program is called the Empower Her, because as you probably know, a lot of people that want to change body, mind and soul with the women I work with, they can't quite believe they will be able to reach that point. So we're empowering her, mm. <laughs> the future self, along the way. And it has come from a place of me walking the walk, talking the talk, sitting in the, you know, the, those dark places to unravel all that power that I have within myself. But knowing that I can do it, and I've walked a lot of the path, I know that I can help impact a lot of women at the same time. and impacting because we are we're changing lives <laughs> and how did you get into coaching have you always been a coach or actually was there a transition before that that led to that so yeah it was it's quite a funny story actually because i'd say i've been in the industry what, 14 years now as a, myself practicing fitness and all sorts of stuff like that into nutrition but i actually was a flight attendant no way. <laughs> uh, yeah that's how I started living in Dubai. I was a flight attendant for Emirates. And alongside of that, I was very much into my fitness still while so I was flying to the point where a lot of cabin crew used to ask me, can you help me? Like, you look amazing and you're still flying. How are you not mm. heavier? Because it generally tends to be a thumb rule that people do 
change when Some, it's that flight. Someone told me that uh, flight attendants will get weighed. Yes. Still. Yeah. Yeah. Which they get weighed at the start and then they get weighed in between their journey, obviously for uniform and stuff like that. But the, there is a lot of discrepancy around that in terms of where they want you to stay with your weight, which again comes back to, you know, that kind of journey that the girls go on is not attaching their worth to the weight as well. So that alone was a big thing, especially in the flying industry. And I had a lot of people, you know, asking me for help, but I wasn't qualified. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I can come to the gym with you. I can help you. And all of a sudden I was inspiring a lot more people. And then I just had this penny drop moment, like, why am I doing this when I know where my passion and purpose lies? It lies with helping people, you know, initially with their bodies. Went into personal training, started doing that, but I was like, it's just not enough. I'm not changing lives. Mm. Like I'm, well, I was a handful of people when they were doing the other stuff. But I, you know, I always came back to that one hour in the gym is not gonna change somebody's life. It's just a diary entry for them to show up. So I took it online. And that's where the real magic started to happen. And that's been, you know, evolving over time and evolving with, you know, myself recently <laughs> more than ever. And it's funny because your je- your program is called Evolution Program, right? That's right. I feel like I've evolved more than I ever have Amazing. in the last, well, it was four and a half months. And that time for me, it's like a rebirth. And it's funny because the whole business has had a rebirth at the same time. And I didn't expect it. It was com- you know, a completely blindsided journey. I know it was gonna be an amazing journey, but this goes back to not holding an expectation of where you were at when you start the journey. I think this is probably what we're gonna sing about. Well, while we're maybe, here. <laughs> maybe well, not. <laughs> while, while, while we're on the topic, I think about right at the beginning of that that process how did that start for you what made you think hmm I want to go explore this so I've always been a person to invest in myself always like as far as with let's say let's going back to about 2019 I hit a bit of a point in my journey where I had this and I, I know sitting a lot of people I had this little bit of awakening and I was like there's something more here I need to explore it, this is 2019. So I've never been afraid to put up my hand and ask for help. And obviously I tell people a lot, like when you start a journey like that, connecting, working on body, mind, everything like that, (laughs) it doesn't stop. It's self evolution. We evolve every single day. We're consistently evolving as humans. And you know, there's no destination, it's just the journey. So I think I kind of got to a point where I was like, there was something just sitting around me. I didn't feel stuck or stagnant, but I just had a little bit of a lack of clarity of where I was going. And I think when I reached out to you, well, I don't know why I keep saying I think, I know when I reached out to you, I was aware of quite a lot of stuff. I think subconsciously, but consciously I didn't want to admit And that was that I was probably living my life in accordance to other people's, you know, ways of life. And maybe I've just left myself behind a little bit. And I know that was, has probably come from just not having somebody in my corner for a while. Because I think it had been maybe about a year since I had somebody one-to-one in terms of mindset and kind of coaching in that way one-to-one very closely. So it was time for me to invest and commit in some way, shape or form, but how much better than it to be linked with business? Because I was also at a place in business where I was like, I can see it. I can see myself impacting so many women, but I just don't know how to go about it, where to go, what to do. And then that was intertwined with a lot of personal stuff that I was facing. Who was I living my life for at that minute? Because it, I don't think it was for myself. I mean, in fact, I know it wasn't mm. for myself now. And I just had, that's all I can describe it as, as a complete lack of clarity and just a little bit lost in my own way. So that's where we started. And you've done a lot of mindset work before. Mm-hmm. 
I yeah. Well, that. a considerate mindset work. Like, yeah. I think you can label all these things so many different things and there's there's like tags on certain things but i really think whatever lands with you Hmm. and if you connect well with it you can continue to do that work whether it be you know working with somebody who's focused on women's health like myself holistic health coaching hormonal coaching or whether it be somebody that's going to help you improve mindset I think it can get tagged in so many different ways. But if it makes you feel better and brings you that element of lighting up your soul, meaning connecting to joy, feeling happier, living in a bit of a higher vibration, that for me is a journey that I've walked. And I know that when I have people in my corner, almost that are in that energy, that's when I start to evolve on my own path myself. So yeah, I have dabbled not dabbled, I've worked yeah. with people and I've invested along the way. And I think meeting you was like an absolute blessing in disguise and connecting with you because it was all tied back to business. So it was like, oh, you, I believe people always come to you on your path when they're meant to be there. When the student and, is ready, the teacher appears. Yes, yes. And like, of course, at that time, I've done quite a bit of work prior. So I did a breakthrough. I've done NLP coaching. I've done all sorts with different people but the best thing about this is everybody's unique in their own way that one person regardless of the technique can be applied in a completely different way and the fact that it all came back to performance in business and hitting that peak flow state and it was like a present from the universe like hello like this is for you now take this or you know you're not ready to level up into the next place and because I did have though all of that stuff going on in the background with business, not that I wasn't, you know, hitting successful months. I just kept, I couldn't visualize where I was going personally and business because I do think you can't segregate the two because especially with coaching, you hold yourself in a certain level of energy now if you've got other stuff going on in your life and if things there's a lack of clarity there as much as you try and protect your energy sometimes that's definitely going to funnel into the business so I think just balancing out the act in that itself is important so of course when you kind of it's intertwined it was like well yeah no brainer that's our that's our unique um that's our unique part of the market that we've built because if we think about my story, my story is one of high performance sports, boxing at a national level and, and, and an international level. Then it is international software sales. So again, high performance, business, leadership, entrepreneurship, having set up a couple of companies, a couple were okay, a couple failed, I'm big failures in that. Uh, therapy, so going to therapy myself, working through an eating disorder, working through a failed suicide attempt, working through anxiety, depression, um, studying as a cognitive hypnotherapist, NLP practitioner, and it's, it's amazing. It's our unique blend of what we've built, which is we have the therapy part in our locker, but we're not looking to just help you cope and survive. Yeah. We're using the therapy part in our locker to actually help you unlock a new level of performance. Yeah. So if I'm listening and I'm hearing, okay, so it's almost like I'm wearing five different hats and I've merged them all into one. But if we unmerge those five different hats, it's like, okay, the entrepreneur hat says, Uh, She's lacking clarity on on where she is trying to take this. The therapist hat can hear the limiting belief that is happening uh, within Alice right now. And these are the things that she knows to overcome. And then the leadership side of me is saying, and as a leader, this is where she needs to step into. And even almost the performance coach is, right, she needs to get a good environment. She needs to get flow. She needs to optimize for that. And as when you when you take all of these various different elements and you just listen to the individual and you go, well, what do they need in that in that moment? Well, then you can create a lot of powerful change because we're not listening for, we want you to be just be stable. We want you to achieve total mental performance. Total mental performance yeah. is flow, it's optimization, it's growth, it's change. And on top of that, it's the ability to deal with suffering. It's yeah. the ability to surrender to not feeling enough, not feeling worthy, but being yeah. triggered and being overwhelmed and knowing I am not the thoughts and feelings within that. I am the space that contains that. And I can either A, identify those thoughts and feelings and then they cripple me, or B, 
I actually just understand that they're like the weather. They will come, they will go, they will come, they will go. Clients always hear me say, surrender, surrender, yeah. surrender. And that's really the the art, the art of letting go and going, yeah. I can't control this, but I'm still enough anyway, and I'm going to find a way through it. And that's yeah. the unique blend of, of, of what we've built. It is, is it therapy? Well, technically, yeah. Is it performance coaching? Well, technically, yeah. Is it leadership coaching? Is it technically, yeah. And when you put all of those together, then we create this really beautiful picture to yeah. understand what does that individual need in that moment. And um, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's a magical experience. <laughs> and I think that's where I always come back to the most successful people I know and the coaches that I've all worked with and people that I have worked with that have helped me to get to where I am they've all hit a place of rock bottom. And that is something I'm reflecting when you do think about that. Of course, because from that place, you, in pain, you find gratitude. Through gratitude, you'll find purpose. Then when you become so passionate about that, about that purpose, you will impact so many people in the most authentic way. And that is, you know, that has been a part of the journey consistently you know it's not I think a lot of people think oh coaches have just yeah strong got mm. it all together they never go through hard stuff because they've done all the work but coming back to self-evolution we are constantly consistently evolving you don't know what life is gonna throw you and I do believe I, I come back to the terminology healers generally you know break that down people that help people teachers mentors guiders they are flung the worst shit <laughs> and I think it's I, well, I do I b believe that it's because we're consistently tested to get to that stronger point in order to help people better and impact people more and then dig deeper into the purpose dig deeper into the passion to go on that journey walk the walk talk the talk help people in the authentic way of knowing what place they've hit, knowing where they're at. And um, I can see that's a journey that has definitely, you know, been there for you as well. Through all these things, you wouldn't have got to where you are. Maybe you would have, but it might have looked like a different way. But you can apply that behind everything you do because you've been in that place. And I'm not saying that's an attractive thing or like, but I do believe that shows in, and it, you can tell in the way somebody delivers their coaching and the way they impact and help and inspire people it is very inspiring. Well, you can always feel when it's when it's right and it connects, but you can also feel when it's off. Yes. And sometimes when you, like, for me, I'm always in coaching. No point in my life do I not have a coach or a mentor yeah. uh, or a therapist or a teacher. And I, I, for me, I'm not a big fan of group programs. I struggle with group programs. I feel yeah, like I get, I get lost in them. But mm. uh, I always have somebody senior. And usually, all of my mentors, since I was, what, 15, 14, all of my mentors have been in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And that's not to say that I don't, ha I do have younger consultants that, that, do, that do help us. Um, but these people have been there, they've done it, they've seen it. Wisdom. Yeah, they, they have that collective <laughs> wisdom. Yeah. And the compound effect of being mentored by these individuals, um, you just absorb all of that. But when you couple all of the learned wisdom on top of experience wisdom, because there's two points. There's one point is yeah. don't do that. You'll make a mistake. Sometimes you have to make the mistake in order to get the lesson. Yes. Um, but the compound effect of that, yeah, you can't bullshit. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think uh, one thing I heard recently, actually, is, you know, oh, but I don't need a therapist, or I don't need this, I'm not depressed. And that, honestly, it's one thing that pains me because I'm like, but do you not want to learn how to be a better you or, or strive to be better or want more things in your life? I mean, some people are quite happy with their life, but I think whether you consider yourself depressed or label yourself that or not, it still doesn't need to be a reason you work with somebody because self-evolution, like I say, like the more you learn, and I can think you always can learn, I can learn. For the rest of my life, I could learn. Every day is a school day. And the more you can have that approach, the more impact, you'll, impact on people you'll have on a larger scale because you're consistently teaching. And that's where my coaching has come into 
because I'm consistently evolving and investing and learning every day, they're like whew, rocket journeys, like, and they are can't quite believe where they're at. And I'm, but then I have the same reflection of like, I can't quite believe where I'm at. But then I'm like, well, I'm investing myself. Yeah. I'm learning from people again, young, young age, older ages. Like I work with, like yourself, more elderly people sometimes. But that is the journey self-evolution you don't need to be labeled sad or depressed to want more yeah and if you don't want more maybe ask yourself why <laughs> why not like you might have a relationship you might have family the kids whatever it might be but there's always some deeper inner work to do to unlock that little bit of abundance and go do you know what i actually can and i think the people that sit down and go no no i'm quite content are the ones that don't believe there's more on the other side of that. Yeah. That's probably the work that's holding them back. And it gets to a point where you just, for me, I think it's the act of surrender and going, well, I kind of don't want to go in that room. I don't want to ask that question, but I know if I ask it, there's always a, a, a positive outcome on the other side. And I kind of see the world at this stage of my life, I kind of see it in, in three sort of spaces one is the ambitious go-getter the one that knows there's more and they want to go and explore and grow and, and do it and that's very much our clientele our clientele our clients that they want to grow they want to develop yeah they're ready mm. they know there's another level they know deep down that they could be performing and doing things more authentically with more love more light more abundance and getting results results for their clients results for their business results for their family that they, they they're obsessive about results performance and continuous growth and that's one pocket, another pocket is uh, the opposite end, which is everything sucks. And you gotta have empathy for these these people. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I I used to be in that place where I was like, I don't know if I can get better. Like I, I'd never give up. I nearly give up once, I was so close, but didn't. And that's a mental health play. And that is the depressed therapist, yes. you know, clinical depression, eating disorder world. That's a different ball game. Yes. Uh, and I think too many people, um, associate doing deep in a one-to-one -one work with that world of mental health struggles psychiatric disorders and that's a different story yeah and then you kind of got the middle which is these people aren't aren't there to go out and go get it they're there to just just do I, if we use the metaphor of months uh hunters hunters <laughs> i don't know that word ages <laughs> <laughs> you in the UK when you hear that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't hear it in Dubai. No, you would not. <laughs> so you've got uh, hunters, farmers, and then there's mental health. If we're talking in the in this world, yes. in the world of mental performance and psychology. And it's not to say that a hunter is better than a farmer uh, or vice versa, but it's just understanding that there's different horses for different courses. And, and for us, we work with yeah. hunters. They want to go and build businesses. Mm -hmm. They want to go and push themselves. They want to grow. They want to develop. They know there's another level for whatever it is that they're doing. A farmer, on the other hand, that's more of an operational role. That is being consistent over time, doing the same thing again and again and again and again. And actually, too much personal change for those individuals isn't actually that that good. Yeah. And sometimes you get somebody that's, that is a pretending to be a hunter when they're actually a farmer. And on the flip side, you've got the other way around. You've got um, hunters that are uh, farmers that want to be hunters and vice versa. So what, what happens is when you're not being authentic, you kind of get stuck. And it's really recognizing, okay, well, if, if I live in a world of hunting and that's my thing, then I want to surround myself with people that are hunting. That doesn't mean you can't be friends with farmers. I've got loads of farming friends that just, yes. they, they are there to work the land and keep things ticking over. But it's learning to identify the difference and, and, and work with the clients that inspire you. Because we can't all yes. be farmers and we can't all be hunters. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. work like that. It is full circle though, because my clients inspire the hell out of me. And through, you know, I do believe when you're in that energy and you're in the right vibration, you'll attract the, the right clients mm. you want to work with. And maybe you didn't even know you wanted to work with them. And, you know, some of my clients, like, like I said, they inspire the hell out of me, every single one of them actually. And then you never know who you're gonna connect with when it comes to working with a client what their capabilities are, what their unit qualities are, what they behold, what journeys they've been on. And I have some of my clients delivering meditations on our calls. Mm. I have some of my clients coming on and doing masterclasses because they're skin professionals, you know, and again, full circle. 
we all help each other and we all integrate in some way, shape, or form. Like you were saying, you know, I like the analogy of hunting, farming, and you can be friends with them, mm. and you know, and yeah, I, like I, I really understand that. But I think full circle, everybody helps each other in some way, shape, or form on that journey if they're ready to do the work, you know? So run me through, what were some of the key limiting beliefs that you had to overcome through the program? Because there's quite a few that came up. Yeah. Um, so I think one thing for me is being, I was aware, but maybe didn't want to admit it because like I said, I've been on that journey. I've done work unfolding and unpacking things before. But it's not to say they can't creep back up because every, you know, every experience brings new things. And I think I was at a point where I discovered I had very low self-esteem. I felt that I wasn't good enough in some aspects of my life, not coaching, I w other, other aspects. But that soon funneled into the coaching and not necessarily with my clients because I was getting results, of course. It was more like wanting to get to the next level with the business, wanting to impact more women, hundreds, thousands eventually. And that's where I couldn't visualize because I think this underlying belief, I'm not good enough, soon obviously imposter syndrome was creeping in and also felt like I wasn't worthy at some points. So I think there were the two things that were cropping up, like I wasn't good enough and I wasn't worthy of it. Where did that come from? Because usually this stuff's born when we're kids. Mm -hmm. If you could go there, what comes up for you when you hear that? So I actually grew up with my dad telling me that my job's not a real job, even to this day. <laughs> and it's cool now. We've, we've smoothed that out. <laughs> and he supports me and he loves me. Of course, it comes from a place of love. Um, but I think that stemmed a lot from my childhood. And that's funneled obviously into certain things that have happened to get to where I were now. Even though consistently working through those things, like I say, you unpack them, you know, and this is why you gotta revisit the work sometimes. So I found myself in that place, again, unknowingly, because when, like I said, when starting with you, I just had a bit of a lack of clarity. I was like, yeah, I've got lack of clarity. I can't really visualize where I'm going. And I've, th those were lurking in the background. <laughs> but within a week of starting with you, I was hit with, like I said, the universe will throw awful things your way, completely blindsided. And it was probably one of the hardest, I'll say it's the hardest thing I've ever had to go through to this day. And I was in that place of like, I've signed up for business mental performance to push my business, to grow the business. Let me tell you, I was nearly questioning myself out of it at that point when I just got hit with this event. And it was a massive curveball, and I was in a place of like, and this is where I can resonate with a lot of people if they get thrown something unexpectedly, if they go through grief, whatever, pain, anything like that, unexpectedly you can talk yourself out of help very fast, mm. very fast. And I was almost like, had this, held such an expectation of myself, like, Alice, this is business coaching. The business isn't gonna go anywhere because you will have to deal with this now. Like you are in pain, you are in sadness, you're in grief. Like you are moving through this. Like I can't even focus on that. I could just about manage my clients. So I almost talked myself out of it and then like I had, you know, a good chat with myself and I was like, this is the point where at rock bottom, you, you need the help. You can't run away from it. Like, because you want to get out of here. So that was a huge curveball upon starting and signing up, which again, I held such an expectation of myself, but when you hold such an expectation, whether it's of yourself or for somebody else, because again, I was like, oh, but I, I won't be able to deliver. I, I'm wasting their time. Already there's so much judgment there. Judgment is like carrying a bag of rocks on your shoulders. Like you're, you're not going anywhere with all of that, even if you try to start. So I think part of me just had to like 
let it go and go, do you know what? You did sign up for a mental performance coaching program for business and to hit peak flow state. But behind all of that, you've got somebody to help you regardless of the situation. And we're just gonna navigate that now. And um, that for me was a moment on reflection, actually I was journaling earlier and I'm reflecting it's where, you know, if anybody's listening to this and you know, they're in process with a coach and especially like coaching with me or like, like somebody like me or you, and they're hit with a total unexpected event. And this event has caused some of the biggest pain you'll ever go through trying not to cry (laughs) um don't stop because people that help you and in a way that can help you you have no idea what they can capitalize into and that's where I am today (laughs) I'm on that journey and on reflection I've got everything I came for and more and nothing like not that I even dreamt of or I couldn't even dream that far yet when I had that sudden hit I nearly ran away from it and it just goes to show that you know if you just surrender and that's how I had to do I just surrendered and I was like well at least you've got somebody to help you you've got a therapist at least Mm -hmm. or you know like the hats that you were talking about well, you can use that now for this rather than business. But actually, when I did that and just surrendered and gone, do you know what? Can't control it, but you've got somebody in your corner. You've got somebody to keep your head above water, and that's all I needed. I needed somebody to just tell me, it's okay, cry, <laughs> do what you need to do. And that kept, kept my head above water to do the daily mundane tasks of showing up. Just showing up with my clients, checking in with them, making sure I was the best version of myself at such a hard time to do what I needed to do. And from that place, looking back now, don't underestimate yourself what can happen in four and a half months because I never imagined I'd be in the place I am today. And that's not to say that, you know, I'm still healing. Of course I am, you know, healing is not linear nor it doesn't have a timeline I am still healing I'm practicing discernment at the same time as well because I am aware I'm still emotionally healing from the event Mm -hmm. maybe in time I will share that and we will come up come back on I'll talk about it because I do believe it can impact and help so many women as well however you know I think you know the journey itself has been incredible because I did get that care for at the beginning most people will bow out I nearly did. I was like, this far. And for people that are listening, like, I'm doing like a tiny little <laughs> <laughs> sign with my hand, like a 1%. Um, but I committed and persisted. And I think that's exactly where, when you hit that point and you hit that low rock bottom, you are challenged with so much in your own head. But that's where the higher self is like, come the fuck on. I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. <laughs> so for context without going into detail um alice's journey was rather unusual it wasn't a typical tmp journey uh, and the reason for that was because she had a major life event happen and we won't go into detail of, of what happened today that's right at the beginning of the process and sometimes as entrepreneurs we often think everything is black and white it's business or it's personal it's business or it's personal but at tmp we work across the entire board because when something huge happens in your personal life where you're experiencing distress and pain and anger sadness grief and all the various different emotions that come with that that can really dump you on your ass and and, and knock you off and sometimes we try and be overly perfectionistic with coaching oh but i'll wait for this to pass and then i'll go and get it done yeah but i don't want to waste my time on this or that but there's never a perfect time and something that's truly remarkable about alice is that she had to go through something which is one of the most difficult things somebody can go through but through the lessons of learning stability because it's one thing being an entrepreneur and a coach when things are going well and things are fine and you're stable it's another thing when you feel like your personal life's falling apart and crashing down and and that is a really difficult thing and that's a skill but top entrepreneurs and top coaches are able to navigate the personal chaos and still find a way in order to move forward they navigate that oh my god what about this what about that and total mental performance isn't just about flowing when things are going well it's the ability to keep moving forward even when you feel like life's smacking you around the face with a baseball bat even when you feel fucking low even when you feel Mm. stuck and and that's what you did 
And sometimes it's not just about the leadership and the mental performance on that side. Sometimes it is the personal game. Mm -hmm. Actually, the thing that's stopping you from performing is your personal life. Mm -hmm. So it's better off doing work in the personal life than it is on more vision and stuff. Because you don't need vision right now. In a, a good coach can adapt. Mm -hmm. Things can change for a client in an instant. And if you are a good coach, you're able to adapt and go, okay, well, what does that person need in this moment? What questions can I ask? What advice can we give? How can we point them in the right direction? And to do that, and take all the lessons and then come out on top from from what from what we've heard you guys are absolutely flying mm -hmm. now. yeah um and sometimes i have to stop myself and go like did i actually go through that like is this real like what's happening <laughs> because like i say you know you'll find through pain you will find purpose and although i already knew what my purpose was prior I'm even more passionate about it. So going through so much pain and grief, you do find gratitude. And I like to use the analogy of like, I know you're like this because you always talk about being like water, but I, I always come up with so many analogies. My girls know me as the analogy queen. Analogy Alice. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, but I like to use the analogy of like, you'll, there's rock bottom and you can imagine that as the sea, right? And it's deep, 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 very like, you know, dark. And, but you've got these clamshells with amazing pearls in them, you know? Like they're found in rock bottom. Mm. They're found in the depths and you probably have to die through painful points. Maybe you'll hit a painful rock to get to that climb and to get that to that beautiful pearl and that shining kind of little star at the bottom there. So again, it's like, you don't find strengths in this joyful, happy vibration. You will not cultivate sh true strength from just, you know, oh yeah, life is great, it's good, it's, you know, it's going well. You will find strength in, in adversity and through adversity and actually plowing through it and waking up, even when you don't wanna wake up and showing up and again, just going back to those, that mundane tasks of life can feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders but if you continue to just continue through the struggle and know that things will get better over time you have no idea how much that can capitalize so that for me has been a big thing of like get really this is another analogy coming grounded like seaweed be like seaweed right so so grounded and centered and anchored in to yourself, meaning the bed, the root of the bed, the sea, but in flow with the water, right? It's in flow with anything that's coming at you because if you're so grounded in and centered in meaning understanding of where you're at that day, emotionally, mentally, physically, energetically, you can be in flow with anything that comes your way. And I think the main thing that I had to navigate is I don't need to know why. <laughs> mm. I don't need to know yeah. why, because what's that going to serve me? Because that'll probably open another bag of emotions when actually I just need to deal with the emotion regardless. So just be in flow. If there's an emotion that comes up, just be grounded, centered in, anchored, knowing, yes, I feel this emotion, let's be in flow with it. And that for me has been the biggest part of you know, I, I talk to my girls about this. So I always say we teach best what we need to learn. Practice it, preach it every day. That's what I was doing. Reminding myself, those pearls, they're found at rock bottom. They're finding painful times, dark times, you know, really places that you don't want to go. But noticing that. Another analogy is like, you know, pulling the arrow back. It doesn't shoot far if you don't pull it right back and you know that can be quite painful in itself so yeah just consistently reminding yourself of that is such a powerful thing to do even in the place of you know darkness and pain sometimes um so yeah well that metaphor the first one and the second one i absolutely love they're mm -hmm. really beautiful you have to go to the depths but in the depths yes. is where the pearls sit mm -hmm. um Weirdly, I don't know if you've done this trip, but there's a trip in, uh, I think it's Fujera, where you go pearl diving. 
No. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You don't actually, do actually dive. They teach you about the history of yeah. pearl diving and how it all works and whatever. That's amazing. But as soon as you said that, I was instantly put myself in the Middle East. I was like, oh, that's where he's going to dive. Yeah. Dive. But it makes sense because you're going down to that, that darkness. It can be yeah. scary down there and you're running out. And they used to hold their breaths. Mm -hmm. Wow. They used to hold their breaths and go underneath the water and then you're running out of oxygen, you're in your air, you're in the darkness. But if you can grab a little pearl, yeah. you come. And, and it, it gives you that light. You know, it's like it's like a beacon of light in that darkness. That that's where you have to cultivate that beacon of light. You have to tune in with that to guide you and navigate you back to the light at times, you know? Yeah, and it's also understanding that you don't need all the answers. Yeah. You know, no. it's, it's understanding no that answers. you don't, you don't need, need the answers right now. <laughs> like particularly yeah. if you're in a place of chaos. Mm -hmm. If you're in a place of chaos. If you're in a place of chaos you need to be thinking, I don't need all the answers right now, I just need the next step. And you need to, to double down on that next step because the metaphor that I love to use uh, is you dealt a set of cards. Mm. So if you're in chaos, you're dealt a set of cards and you've got to try and solve, okay, well, what is my next move? Because mm -hmm. if you're looking for all of the answers of, but what about this and this and this and all these various different equations that you cannot solve because they're all variable equations, well, that's just noise. Whereas if you can go, okay, this is my current set of cards. Here is the next step. It's here. What do I need to do in order to get here? And just double down on that. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be more chaos. And it's like, right, it's fine. Let me just focus on it. And, and it is as simple as taking the next step, and the next step, and the next step, and the next step, and just slowing everything down. Whereas if you get caught up in the existential, well, what does this mean about this? What does it mean about me? What does it mean <laughs> about them? What does it mean about business and the market and this and that? You're always going to be stuck. But if you can learn to cut out all of that noise and go, right, what's the next step? It's just down here. Okay, what's the next step? Next step. And that's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. And you did a great, a great job of that. Yeah. And I think it was like, although nobody wants to go through pain sadness grief and what i went through like as i explained it was one of the most well the most challenging thing i've faced in life so far but i do believe i had to go through that i had to walk that path i had to be you know be there and feel all those things so that i could have that next expansion for my own journey for my personal journey and i could then gather all that continued something you said unwavering faith within myself and you know again this is why reflection is so powerful because sometimes yeah I, i'm still healing like I, i'll still have those low days they're just less frequent now which is great so but i know how to navigate it i know how to choose and what i need to do and the next step like you said this the more you try and understand something in in the midst of chaos the more that's going to cause more noise and you <laughs> you often just can't you know when you're in that place you're not making good quality decisions for yourself at all in any way shape or form because you start to become again that you know very there's very loose boundaries when you come to that place and you probably start to try and do stuff to please other people and I kind of found myself there too and that's why I had to sit still and sit in silence with myself and often people run from being still being silent you know even switching off music and just letting themselves sit in the silence that's when all the things come flooding in but then that's where you'll find those little penny drop moments of right that's what I need to do right go do it action it and um yeah that that for me was a bit of a game changer throughout the process and just having that constant support which was of obviously incredible to have but also knowing that you know I could I could go on this call and I think I did fight with myself in between the journey still like there was, again like you don't just go oh just drop all judgment and that's it like we get told to drop judgment but you have to practice it mm. like everything yeah. you just continue you have to continue to practice you know knowing knowing what's your inner bitch as I like to call it and knowing actually what is going to serve you and I had to continuously remind myself, drop judgment, because this coaching session that ev every other week, jumping on Zoom, I remember like before, like a couple of the sessions, I remember being like, what am I gonna talk about my business? Like, I'm actually just doing business. I'm just letting things flow. I'm not even thinking about the next step with business. I'm thinking about how I feel on a daily basis. And that's why I just had to hold back and go, and create that safe space. When I came on Zoom, it's just a safe space. For me, that is, 
that was a game changer. You cannot perform if personally you're all over the shop. So people underrate the estimation of the, the e people underrate how much personal optimization in your personal life can move the needle forward in your business. And people often look at business first and they forget about the individual. Yeah. And when you can start to optimize, this is how I see the world, this is how I see myself, this is how I see relationships, this is my self-care, this is my recovery, this is my routines, this is how I, how I work. Then that's without going into any of the, the deep emotional stuff first, that can really start to move the needle. And when you start going into the limiting beliefs that are keeping you there, then when you go back to business, the energy that you have is so much more powerful yes. because it's flowing. Mm -hmm. Flow state. Yeah, it doesn't, a lot of business isn't just a business conversation, it isn't just numbers and figures and planning and, and strategy and whatever. A lot of it is just, how are you doing it? How are yeah. you? A lot of business isn't necessarily being more right, it's being less wrong. How can you be less wrong? Well, if you, you're personally in a lot more control, you'll make better decisions that are likely to yeah. be less wrong. And having the people around you to hold that space, because a lot of humans, um, I'm one of them, verbally process. They solve equations when they're speaking it aloud. That's yeah, why I've always got say. a one-to-one -one mm -hmm. mentor, always. In every single, I can't remember the last time I didn't have a one-to-one -one mentorship call um, for more than two or three weeks. Month, never more than a month. Every single month I've got one, at least one or two one-to-one -one mentorship calls. That's Some of them, amazing. there might not be much to say. No, much. Things are things are good. And you're like, cool. Other times, it's like, oh, I can see, I can spot this, buddy. You're going down this path. <laughs> Don't go down there. Yeah. Or you've gone to a new level. Here are some new lessons you need to learn at this level. So for me, I find that having that support and that consistent guidance changes the game. And it's not being afraid to be led. It's not being afraid to yeah. to to go and be vulnerable with someone and go. Well, how do I how do I navigate that? What would you say, looking back now at the evolution process, what would you say the key differences are from how you used to be to who you are now and how the process had accelerated that change? So, as I mentioned, it's kind of like through my own journey, personal journey with the evolution program, I kind of had that rebirth a little bit with business as well, like, the, I always had a rebrand in the background, always. I just never did it. I just never, nothing ever landed with me um, enough to understand how I wanted to articulate the branding, how I wanted it to look, how I wanted it to feel. And until I started, you know, that journey of, you know, journey into helping myself in a time of pain and just things started to land. like. And this is where, you know, at no point did I, I have a business coach in the background, Ollie, supercharged, it's absolutely phenomenal. And amazing, worked for him for two years. And it was kind of like, even though we have that mentorship in the background and it's like, guys, do this, get on this, do this, push the needle forwards, obviously externally on Instagram, I needed to kind of keep that, I, I just didn't have energy digitally mm. for those few months that I was moving through all those things so I was working on myself personally but then everything just started to fall in line it, it, the right energy was gravitating towards me I now have an employee I have a coach who works alongside of me in the business which is absolutely incredible I just did not see that mm come in yes it was in the pipeline it was in the background but it wasn't in a four month mm. timeline plan and for that to occur and her be full time now and the business is growing and you know the the branding is about to launch I do feel like it's all just aligned with how I am coming out of mm. pain you know and sadness and grief and then that's rebirthing in its own way and I have literally like I think your words, you want to take people to peak flow. I'm there. But sometimes, like, I needed to shake myself and be like, am I there? I'm, I'm, I think I'm there. And even now, I'm like, well, well is it happening? Is it doing? Mm. I'm, I'm, and then I look at everything on, like, on paper. I'm like, you didn't, didn't have this in the timeline, but I think this was the vision. Like, mm. I'm just in flow. 
<laughs> and that's how I kind of go about life anyways. Like I kind of just go in flow with my own energy, how I feel. And again, in those dark days, just to do everything I can to fill my cup up and optimize joy. And that's just led me down that, you know, up that path, I'd say. But with you guys, that I would not be there. Categorically, I can say, hands down, I would not be in the place I am now, business, personal, you know, well-being, everything, if I hadn't adjoined. And I would very quickly talk my, nearly talk myself mm. out of it, nearly backed out at, you know, get the get-go. But it was the best thing I ever did. How would you describe your TMP experience in three words? Emotional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, abundant. Mm -hmm. Successful. Hey. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I well, don't like being limited to three words, Kieran. I, I know. <laughs> I know. That's why I like to I like to ask that question. Yeah. What would you say to anyone that's listening to this and they're, they're still on the fence? They want to they wanna join the program. They want to do it, but they're just not quite there. What would you say? You can never stop investing in yourself and you can never stop growing. Never. No matter how many coaches, mentors, guides you've had on your journey, you can never, ever stop being a better version of yourself. And if you invest in yourself with the right people, it will come back in tenfolds. And I hope anybody that's listening to this can resonate with that because I did not expect to be where I, where I am now. And I'll be internally grateful for that journey. Um, and ever ever evolving journey, as I always say. So if you're on the fence, don't sit on that fence, dive right in to the depths of those waters. Wherever it takes you, trust that that's what you're meant to go on. I think that's the most important thing, just trust that. Even if it feels sticky, even if it feels hard, even if it feels stagnant, trust that that's the, that is the journey, that's the path. And on the other side of that, there is an insane amount of growth and strength so yeah well uh, Alice thank you so much for coming on the podcast thank you so much for sharing your story and, and it's been an honour to have you on the team like you have done the work you've overcome some huge puzzles and you come out on top and that's the definition of total mental performance so a huge well done I'm here to present you with your thank cap you. your cap we do not get as you know you cannot buy a cap you have to earn the cap and uh, you oh finally God, so happy. earned your cap <laughs> so a huge 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 well thank done thank you so it's a, and thank it's you to you and the team and everyone like I mean it when I say it like you kept my head above water during the darkest times and yeah I, I don't think I'd be where I am without you guys so eternally grateful and definitely a again a journey that's not coming to an end so very 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 grateful and thank you for having me on here a pleasure where can everyone find you you can find me at, at Alice Blackledge on Instagram. Amazing. Well, guys, look, if you found this podcast helpful, please tag us in your stories, share it. We want to take this out to the world. We want to help every people. Ambitious minds understand that you can still feel all these emotions. You can feel stuck. You can feel like the world's crashing in on you, yet you can still turn up. You can still perform and you can still live a life of abundance and psychological freedom. Not the absence of suffering, the ability to suffer and still do it anyway. And that's that's a testament. <laughs> that sums you up in there. Uh, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. The best thing you'll ever do. That's actually what you said to me before you got on this podcast. I, I'm, I'm feeling fear. I was like, good. It's not going away. So huge well done. <laughs> Smashed it. High five. Thank you. Boom. Team. Woo!